Hello everyone, welcome to our Rigs Management School. My name is Nicola Koser and I'm a member of the Pirani team. I'm excited to be here with you today to explore the theoretical and practical aspect of the different topics that we will see. To help us delve into this session, we have with us Alejandro Rego, CEO at Pirani. Hi Alejandro, how are you? Hi Nicole, hi everyone. You are on. <laughs> well, Alejandro, in this session we have how to manage our rigs, our organization rigs. And um, I'm excited to hear about this topic. So before we begin, I would love to invite everyone to continue learning about the world of rigs management by visiting the Pirani Academy, where will you find a valuable learning materials. I leave the link in the chat now so you can see the website. So here you there. And finally, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to make them through the question and answer section. And we'll be happy to answer them at the end of this webinar. Now let's begin with this exciting topic. Over to you, Alejandro. Okay, thank you, Nicole, and thank you, everyone. Oh, I seen in the chat that. Uh, Kushan from Mauritius, oh, amazing, <laughs> very far away. What time is there, uh, Kushan? And, and hello, Sa uh, I see Sander. I remember Sander from the last session, the master class, 7 p.m. Well, here in, we are in Colombia right now, and here is 10 a.m. Okay, thank you very much to, to joining us. So we are in the, in the risk management school in the last session. Remember, we, we talked about the, the risk management cycle and uh, one of the first, the, the first chapter, the first step is identify context. So in the, in the whole risk management school, this season of the risk management school, we, we're gonna talk about the risk management cycle. So the last school, we talk about the identifying context and we, a specific processes. So we, we, we talk about the process map, the macro processes, process the processes, the categories. So today we wanna keep talking about the identifying context, but we're going to dive into risks, the next step. And we also gonna move across the second phase the second chapter about mission risk so i hope this we're gonna have the time to do all this in this risk management school and in the, the next uh, schools the next master class is will be to cover the, the full risk management cycle so let's start with the definition of risks and i want to work this is my this is the, the definition that i like the most is based on ISO 31000. And in the context of risk management, risk is defined as the effect of uncertainty of, of, on objectives. The effect of uncertainty on objectives. This means that risk is the possibility of an event or situation occurring that could have an impact on the achievement on the organization's goal and objectives, right? So risk, can be seen as the likelihood and potential consequences of a threat or opportunity. And I want you to take this in account. It's not, the risk is not only negative things. Risk is also opportunities and things that you can do in your company to grow or to be a better company. Companies that, not, that do not take risks are companies that do not grow. So, these, these concepts are very important, but maybe you want to work with a more specific definition of risks in, in a more specific context. So I also bring you two definitions or a strategic risk and operational risk, because there are, there are many risks definitions or the risk uh, categories depends on the risk management that you want to do. For instance, if you're going to do anti-money laundering, 
maybe the definition of the risk or the approach of the risk is, is going to be different. So today we're going to talk about the, the broad definition of risk and in a strategic risk definition refers to the potential of ne negative impact on an organization's ability to achieve its strategic objectives. So as you can see, it's very aligned with the, with the ISO 31000 definition. Uh, it is the risk associated with the uh, organization overall strategy, including its business model, goals, and approach to achieve them. And the definition of operational risk is defined as the risk or loss resulting from inadequate or failing internal processes, people, systems, or external events. We're going to explain it a little bit more later. Uh, so this can include risks associated with a wide range of activities, such as financial report and information technology. So we're going to work with, with, the, with, this, with these two definitions. So if we're talking about the the risk is the effect or of uncertainty on objectives. And in the last masterclass, we talked about the, the definition of process, and we talked about the process have a component that input activities and output. The, the, a very good starting point of identifying the risk of my company will be what is the output that we want in our processes? What is the outcome? What is the result that we want of our processes, of our mission of processes? If we don't get in those outputs, that's the first risk that we want to achieve or, or we want to address, right? But this is not the only thing to take in, in, in mind because there are risk factors that we also should consider in operational risk management, for example, there are people. This includes risks relating to human mistakes, misconduct, fraud, inadequate training, or supervision of employees. People are not machines. People, all of us, can make mistakes. So these are risks for the company. Of course, we want to address the, the processes risks. This includes risks related to errors and efficiencies in business processes, inadequate documentation, failures to comply with policies or regulations. We also need to talk about systems or technology. Uh, these risks are related to technology failures, cyber attacks, data breaches, inadequate uh, information technology infrastructure. Maybe we have a, a technology supplier that, that trash or, or maybe the server get down those risks, we can put it in our, on our risk management. Of course, we have external events, legal or regulatory. Oh, sorry, this, is, uh, this is, should be environmental and reputational. So we also can address risks in internal and external. What is this approach? There are risks within the organization itself. There are risks that I can mitigate or I can see in the first hand, like human error, like fraud, like information security breaches, like inadequate processes or controls, like system failures or system of my own, like culture and conduct, a toxic or dysfunctional corporate culture or behavior that is inconsistent with the organization values or ethical standards can result in a range of risks. But we also have external risks that are outside the organization and because of that are beyond our control. Like natural disasters, like, uh, like hurricanes, flood, earthquakes, wildfires, we can be affected by that. Maybe we, we need to send a, a, a product and there is a natural disaster and I can send it or, or my clients have as offices in a, in a natural disaster area. So of course, this risk can affect our company. We have political events 
of course there are different contexts in in different um, contexts and countries but political instability can affect any company it's not the same to have a company i don't know in, right now in, in miami it's not the same political events that in new york and it's definitely it's not the same political events that ukraine or russia right uh, economic factors like recessions inflation currency fluctuations uh, interest rate changes of course can affect our company competitive factors uh, like new market entrants disruptive technologies for instance maybe maybe google right now is has the risk of the entrance of chat gpt right and, and and in technology these competitive factors as a very important risk supply chain disruptions like the availability of course of raw materials or maybe uh, i don't know because of the war in ukraine there there are some uh, a, a material that I cannot uh, import or we cannot buy it. So, of course, there is a risk. Legal and regulatory changes relating to laws and regulations. Maybe uh, the, the regulation in, in my country or in my industry changes next year, or maybe they require me to do something that they do not require me last year, and I need to do address that. And, of course, public health. Maybe this external risk was not very interesting five years ago, but of course, after pandemic, like COVID, of course, affect the business continuity of many businesses, right? So if we can have this uh, approach of external uh, risks and internal, we're talking about the context. It's not only to have my processes very understanding of my processes but it's all is about the context of my company we have to look inside my company inside my processes this is the first step of course it is but we also need to to understand the context of my company in every uh, in every one of these aspects or or areas, right? So there is a, a simple method to identifying risks. We can talk about brainstorming. If we, okay, because if we starting doing risk management in the company, and and I and I already have my process map, and maybe I already have my context. Uh, what we can do to start doing risk management before to identify and you know, put in put in a name of other risks. Maybe we can make a brainstorming. And it's a simple and effective method to identify risks. Uh, we, we go, we're going to talk with the risks uh, owners, with the process owners, with the CEO, with the team to understand what's happening. Or maybe we, we're going to talk with, even with my providers or my clients, or maybe with a consultant, or maybe with, with my lawyers to understand what is going to happen in, in the regulatory aspects. There is another method called like the SWOT analysis, like the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Like because the invitation is to understand what do you have inside your company, but also what you have outside. What is the threats or or, or opportunities uh, inside your company? And again, it's not always going to be negative things because a regular regulatory changes can be good or bad. Maybe a regulatory a change in the laws is going to affect me in the in a positive way because maybe I I will be able to explore more or I will going to be uh, some benefits because of that. So this is this is not only in the in negative way and, and it's very important to understand that. Maybe we can do a checklist in the third method can be used to identify risks in specific areas for the company. For example, a safety checklist could be used to identify potential safety risks. Of course, we have we can have expert interviews. As I told you, maybe in my in my team, we're gonna talk with them, but maybe we can invite to an expert in, I don't know, in environmental things or in legal stuff 
or in with a doctor to understand it, it depends of the of the mission or the context of my company and of course it seems to be obvious but the observation is always going to be a very good starting point observing the company's processes and activities can also be a simple way to identify risks and always remember like i like i told you the last master class the, the three lines on the fence no one knows better the process or the operation of the company like the people that runs that operation so the first line of the fence if you want to talk about the risks of the technology process talk with the technology team if you want to identify the risks of the i don't know the sales process of the marketing process talk with the sales and marketing team so this is the brainstorming uh, or this external interview or the checklist or whatever they know the the process of, and in consequence the risks but you are uh, or, or in this case the risks and compliance team is the second line of defense like they, they run like something like a like a psychologist they 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 going to do the right question to the first line of defense they're going to talk with them they're going to ask them question to trying to understand the process and of course the risks associated and then the third line of defense will be internal audit that will going to understand with a wider approach everything that is going or happening in the company so remember this and then once you understand the process of your company and the context of your company maybe you want to identify and associate a risk with the process so this will be the next step once we, i understand the context of my company i understand the processes internal and external and i uh, identify the risks we can link them and then and we're going to see an example in a risk management software how, how we can do this and and also it's important to understand that a process can have different risks associated maybe it's not only one it may be in the in the, the process of i don't know selling my products in the in the foreign countries there are an economic risks uh, political risks a supply a uh, disruption risks so maybe a, a single process can link or can associate different risks so this is important to take in mind and again maybe there are risks that are opportunities it's not not only negative things so once we identify the processes and the risks of my company the next step will be measure it right so we we talk about the identifying context processes and risks and now we're going to measure the risks that will be the, the second step in the risk management cycle so how can we do this well there's also a uh, different methods to do this but one of the the simplest is the impact and livelihood of the risks impact so we 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 identify one risk so maybe my company is a company that product and um, and sells and delivers pizza and maybe one risk is not no, we'll be able to to put the pizza on my client's table as simple as that and what is the impact of that risk so the impact refers to the potential consequences or effects of a risk event on our organization objectives remember the definition of iso 31000 the impact can be positive an opportunity or negative a threat and can affect various aspects of the organizations such as financial performance reputation safety or environmental factors we're going to see a, a, a specific example of this and we also want to take uh, and count the the likelihood likelihood refers to the probability or chance of a risk event occurring it is a measure of the frequency or occurrence of the risks and can be expressed qualitatively 
low, medium, high, or quantitatively, a percentage of frequency rate. So once we have these two uh, factors, but remember that the impact can be direct, the direct approach of the impact of and a specific risk to won't be able to put the, the 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 pizza on my client's table will be high or critical or severe or low or medium but we also can take in account different impact variables like operational so if i cannot deliver the, the pizza that i produce maybe it will be an impact operational so the impact of a risk can also affect company operational efficiency such as through supply chain disruptions, equipment failures, or severe attacks. But maybe we can also have a financial impact performance or a reputational. What going the market say about me if I do not fulfill my mission or, or we can not do what I promise to do? Or the legal and regulatory. Uh, there is an impact I'm going to be to have fines or penalties if I if that risk occurs. We also can uh, an, an, an environmental impact. Okay, maybe I I I, I am a manufacturing company and maybe I have uh, I don't know one of my my material were were in the on a river or I'm contaminating the, the air, or I'm contaminating the, the water in, in my neighborhood. I don't know, whatever can happen, this will have an environmental impact, but we also will have an, an legal, a regulatory, and also a, reputation, a reputational impact. So maybe we, we need to have all this different approach. On, or maybe we have a, a health and safety impact. Maybe I have my employees in a company or in my production plan, and we have a lot of noise. And maybe this noise in the process of my company is affecting the health and safety of my employees. And that's a risk that can affect the health and safety of my collaborators, but, I, but also my reputational uh, is a reputational impact. So we also going to see how we can do this in our risk management software. And once we, we take in mind the likelihood and the impact, then there is a very known asset in the risk management that is the risk heat map. The risk heat map is a visual representation of risks that uses a color code matrix to illustrate the likelihood and impact of different risks. The matrix typically has a vertical axis representing livelihood and the horizontal representing the impact. And the use of color coding make it easy to identify risks that require more attention or resources. Because maybe if I have, I don't know, a hundred processes or the, whatever number I have, and we're going to identify 200 risks of my company. So the next thing is, okay, you're going to address all the risks at the same time, or you need to prioritize and, and put more attention and resources in one of them. And that's why we need our risk heat map to understand what are those risks that I need to address immediately or with more attention. So in a more graphic way, so maybe I identify a risk here, and maybe I want to make my risk heat map. Maybe I can do a, a four by four or five by five. So, I, so the likelihood is a, a very, the, the first step will be remote, almost never happen and unlikely, impossible, unlikely. But maybe I want to do a risk heat map or matrix like five per five. As many as you need is not a, a single recipe. I mean, the most common is five per five, but again, you can do as you as you need. And of course, the the impact, the the minor, moderate, major, severe. And when I put a risk and I measure the likelihood, and I'm going to say, okay, the 
the rates of not delivering the pizza on time, the likelihood would be unlikely, almost never happen. But the impact that I'm going to have in here will be major because the confidence of my clients or my reputation or whatever. So in this case, my risk will be located here in the in the risk heat map, right? And of course, I need to to understand what is the color of the or the my risk heat map. I need to define the risk level. So what is for me a, a, a risk level low, medium, high, or critical? Or maybe I'm going to do only with three colors or four or five or whatever. And I want to understand, okay, the like if the likelihood is here and the severity is here. So the, this this one in red will be the most critical and the and the and the risk that I need to focus on on the first time. And maybe if I have a risk that is in green, I don't have to, to put as that many resources or, or time to time to address it, right? But we're going to see about the addressing the risks in the next step. But right here, we need to understand what is my risk and measure it in a risk heat map. And then once we have the, the evaluation or the assessment of the risk and we can put the risk in the risk heat map, I, I'm going to have the inherent risk that refers to the level of risk that exists in a process activity or system before any risk management or control measure are applied. So this is the theory of this masterclass here. Now we're going to see this in the software, but what we're going to see in the, the next masterclass, in the next risk management school, uh, school, because once we have the risks located in the risk heat map, now we're going to talk about what I can do with that risk. And this is called the risk treatment. Once is avoidance, the risk. This involves taking steps to eliminate the risk altogether. For example, if a company decides to avoid the risk of a certain product line, it may choose to discontinue that product line entirely. Maybe I want to land my company in Russia or in Ukraine. Uh, and then I, I, I saw the, the risk, the potential risk or open my a headquarter of operation in Russia, for instance. And maybe I want to avoid that risk. And the way to avoid that risk is not opening the headquarters. But this is only one treatment that you can do. And again, companies that do not take risks are companies that do not grow. Or maybe I want to mitigate those risks that is involved taking steps to reduce the likelihood or impact of the risks. For example, if a company identifies a cybersecurity risk, it may implement additional security measures to reduce the likelihood of a cyber attack. But we can also transfer the risk. This involves transferring the risk to another party, such as insurance company. For example, a company may purchase insurance to transfer the risk of a natural disaster or other event that could result in financial losses. So, because remember the internal and external risks, we can do a lot of things to mitigate internal risks or because of processes of people. But what we can do about our, our disaster, I cannot change that. I cannot change the, the weather, but there are insurance for that. So maybe those weeks we can transfer. Well, I cannot transfer every single one of my weeks. And we can accept some risks. This involves accepting the risks without taking any further action this may be appropriate if the likelihood and impact of the risks are deemed to be low or if the cost of mitigating the risk is greater than the potential impact. There are risks that I can embrace, and that's okay also. But if I choose to mitigate the risks, we're going to do something like this. We have a control to move the risks in my risk heat map. So the inherent risk was here. 
And maybe the risk is, okay, I have a delivery a man to, to deliver the pizza. So a risk can be that the delivery have an accident in the motorcycle, for instance. Well, I can do controls to do to, to mitigate the risks. So maybe I can put a, a helmet or a security a, a tire, and maybe we're going to reduce the impact of the, an accident, for instance, right? So once we have controls linked to my risks, if I want to mitigate them, we're going to have the residual risks. And basically, this is risk management. To have the context of my company, to list the risks that can affect my objectives, and treat those risks in order to achieve the goals of my company. So we're going to dip into the, the, the next step in the risk management cycle will be strategies. So the, the next risk management school, we're going to talk in deep about strategies but today we're going to focus again on the on the measure of the risks right and the let me back we're going to we're going to see the practice of the identifying risks and measure risks in a risk management software so nicole put you in the chat that you can create a, a pirani account in just two minutes so you can, so we can do the exercise together. The, I think that the, the best way to understand a lot of concepts of everything, not only in risk management, is doing risk management. So please, if you have the time, if you, you can try to create the, the Pirani account and you can put, us, put it in the chat if you already have the account or, or if, you need, if you need help with, help with that. Nicole, sorry, Nicole Gladly will help us. So we're going to do this uh, identifying risks and measure risks on our risk management software with Pirani. And remember, Pirani is a very, very good software to do risk management, not only because we say so, because Garner and Capterra say so. Uh, we have two years in a row as one of the best risk management software globally. We, we were in the shortlist of 2022, and we just be in the shortlist of 2023. And we also are front runners in software advice 2022 and 2023. And in G2, we are one of the best operational risk management. We are the leader in the quadrant of leaders and best relationship. So you are in a good hands if you want to try this practice with, with in risk management with us. So remember that in the last risk management school, we talk about processes. We, we create the, the, the processes of my company in the software or in the document that you have. We have all the processes. So remember, this is just the first step. So now we're going to create the risks. And remember that, okay, we can start from what is the outcome of the process in order to create the risks. So here we have a, a, a already created risks. And as you can see, maybe a risk is geopolitical risks. And I have the inherent risk is height and the residual risk is low. But let's start from the beginning and let's create some risks from zero, from scratch. So maybe we already have the brainstorming or the interview or you already know very well my process or I'm very aware of the context of my company. So I want to create the, the rigs here. So in Pirani, for instance, we have two options. We can create, okay, maybe the, our rigs will be a, a hurricane. <laughs> I don't know if this is a, it's an external event. But if you don't know how to start, we can always suggest a risk because we understand that facing the blank page is not very easy sometimes if you're new in risk management. So we are connected with ChatGPT, with intelligential AI. So maybe you can choose the industry that you work with 
So I don't know if you if you want to put it in the chat on the in, or in the question and answers. What industries are you are you here to put a, a more <clears throat> specific risk? Okay, somewhat put it in the in the health industry, and I want to choose what the process of the health industry can affect. Maybe the the marketing process or the customer service. So I'm going to click the suggest. So basically, we are connecting with the information of ChatGPT that so they can suggest a list of risks that I can use in the risk management of my company. So that's very helpful in a in a risk management software though. And in the context of operational risk management. So for instance, Technical failures or glitches in risk system may result in disruptions in customer service or lack of robust disaster recovery plan may lead to significant operational disruptions. Uh, okay, inadequate training of employees on risk system may lead to errors or database. So maybe I can choose the, 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 the risks that suggest me ChatGPT or maybe I can create the, the risks by, my, by myself, right? So maybe I put the name, I put a description, maybe I will, I want to have a, uh, an evidence of that. And now will be the next step that is measure these rigs, because right now only, we only have the name of the rigs that inadequate training of employees will be a rigs. So I can put the direct measure, the direct rating. Okay, what is the impact of that? Uh, maybe is will be major. What is the likelihood of that? I don't know. Some I don't have a an onboarding process for my employees, so maybe that will be very likely. So once we rate my risks based on my context, because again, this rating not, is not going to be the same in every single company. It depends of the knowledge that you have for your company, the understanding that you have for your company. So once we rate this, measure this risk, as you can see in the heat map, we, we have the inherent risks in real time, right? And we can associate these risks with one of my processes, right? So maybe I will going to associate uh, to, I don't know, uh, I mean, administrative process, management process, marketing process. I think, I think the the that that risk is very wide, and I can use it in everyone. So maybe I'm going to risk with this process, associate with this process, and I'm going to create the risks. Right. So inadequate training of employees will be one of my risks. And as you can see, I have the inherent risk in height and the residual risk is in height because we still not have any control to mitigate that risk. So that's why we are we have the residual risk. But what if we can if we, if we want to measure the risk with different variables, like as I teach you before? Why if I want to uh, understand that the impact of environmental will be different in uh, health and safety. So we can also set that. It depends on the maturity level of your company. So I'm going to to the settings of, of the software. I'm going to a uh, risk rating in operational risk management. And as you can see, here is the rating type direct, but I'm going to put by variables. And I can choose whatever variable I need in my company with a description that is linked to my company reality of with my company context. For instance, I'm going to measure the financial performance or the financial impact of a risk. So maybe I got to put the weight of 20% or only one or, or only we have to, we want to have two variables that is okay 
as many variables as you, as you need. In this case, we have financial, reputational, health and safety, environmental, and, re and legal and regulatory. And we can also put descriptions in what is the financial impact in my company if that risk occurs. In this case, for my company, the minor impact will be losses under $100. Uh, and uh, impact moderate with the losses between a hundred and a thousand dollars, and critical will be losses over uh, one hundred thousand dollars. But you can change the different range for your company or different currencies. I mean, whatever you need. So we're gonna save this. Ah, oh, well, and there's another as question that you need to answer. In, in the measure of the risk, once I have the five variable impacts, I want to take the, 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 the calculation on average or the highest rating, because maybe everything is very is low, but the, only the financial is critical. So we, we, we want to have the, the average for, for the five, or the critical, it's, if everyone is low, but the financial is critical, we're going to go with the critical. You can choose on average of the highest rating. And once we choose this, we can do also that in, in likelihood, but we only, let's just see in the, in, the, in the impact. So once we have that, now if we're going to create a, a different risk, for instance, I don't know. Let, let's go into with the with the product contamination. As we can see, we can rate the impact. Yeah, not only the direct approach, but okay. What would be the financial impact if I have a a, a contamination in, in a product? Maybe it will be major. But what will be the reputational impact if I do that? Okay, maybe it will be critical. Remember that we don't put description, but you can put, okay, what will be the description of a critical impact if you have a contamination product? What will be the health and safety? Maybe it will be severe. What will be the environmental risks of have a product contamination? Maybe it will be moderate. Or what would be the the legal and regulatory, maybe will be critical. And the likelihood will be direct. And once we have the, the all the variables impact and the likelihood, we're also going to have the, the inherent risk in my risk heat map. So I really recommend, to, if you are new in the risk management, do the risk measure direct. But if you want to try a different approach, you want to re reduce the subjective of the, of the measure of the risk, do it in this way. I think this will be better, right? And remember that you won't going to associate these, these risks with the process. So I want to link with the deliver food, for instance, in this case, and, and create. So in this case, the product contamination has an inherent risk in high. And because remember, we don't have any change in the residual risk because we don't have uh, an strategy risk management yet. We don't have associate any control yet. And then if we all have all these risks in my company, all the risks that I can identify in my company, that's why the, the risk heat map is for. So to understand what risks do I have in my company? So in this case, we have a risk heat map uh, of five per, five per five, minor, moderate, major, severe, and critical. Remember, you can put any name in your case. So in this, in this case, we have a lot of process. We, don't have, we only have one process in the critical area, the red one. We don't have any processes in the, in the green area and the low risks. So if you have a lot of risks to address, how can you start to risk management this? Maybe 
you can you want to look at this the data breach and what what is the, the processes that you have right so this is a very useful tool to understand how can we start to do my risk management in order to to we can we can do everything at once right so this is basically the 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 content that we have for you today uh, remember that once you 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 associate controls with the process the, the, with the risk sorry you will have the residual risk that will be this so remember that we have the inherent risk in, in in this case in my risk heat map and then after the controls that we put them we move as you can see we move a lot of risks to the green area because of the controls that we create to mitigate those risks so this will be that we're going to dive into a, a risk management strategies in the next risk management school so today masterclass was about this this was about how to measure and how to put the rigs uh, in the in the rigs heat map so we have 15 minutes to questions and answers there's anything that you can see on the so far or there's anything that you want to deep into the presentation yeah alejandro we they send me send me an uh, internal question so i will tell you okay john asks us about what methodology do you recommend to identify breaks well i put this i have this we have a different methodology but he wants yeah, to yeah i mean you know. what is the best yeah it depends because remember that you maybe to understand the internal risks of your company the best way is to talk with the people of your company like in the three lines of defense yeah. so maybe the brainstorming will be a uh, work very well to understand the internal risks of your company because you're talking with the technology team with the marketing team with the operational team and that will be amazing if they no one understand better the processes and in consequence the risks that them but maybe it won't be the same case if you want to address the external risks with the technology team so maybe in that scenario will be better to to have an expert interview or just observation i mean but maybe right now is is not very difficult to understand that the political context in colombia is not very good and maybe you don't need to have a, an extend interview with with an external advisor right so it, it depends on the regs that you want to address and but one if i want to choose only one i will go into with, with the SWOT analysis because this is basically have the the wider approach because when you understand your strength what are the strengths of your company of your processes but the weaknesses as well that are internals but then you going to address the opportunities that are external what i can do to to grow my company to land in new markets or whatever will be very interesting and of course the threats are external so if i want to choose one i will go to SWOT analysis super uh, sebastian says uh, who should be in charge of identifying risks in an organization? That's a very good question. I, uh, of course, I'm very, <laughs> I don't know, I'm very, very in love with the, the, the three lines of defense uh, framework. But I, again, no one understands better the risk of a company that the process owner of the process team right so I, I i will start with this but it's not the only one that's that's why the the second and the field line exists so maybe the technology team will address will identify i don't know five risks because they are 
in their context. They only see their day to day, they, they, they business as usual. But maybe the second line of defense, in this case, the risk manager, the risk team, or the compliance officers, or, or whatever in the second line of defense, understand the approach a little bit wider. So maybe as a psychologist, they are they going to ask them, okay, perfect that you can see the, these five rigs. And have you taken into account these other two? Because maybe I, uh, because you know a little bit more of the context, or maybe you are reading more about rigs. And so, and that's okay. That doesn't seem that the, the first line do their job bad. That's exactly the point that maybe they are the first line of defense, they, they identify five, and you help them to, to identify another two. And maybe in the third line of defense, they saw a third one, another one. And that's perfect because in this case, three lines defense better than only one. And that will be the case. I don't know if that answered your question. Okay. Alejandro, we have another question from Stephanie. She asked us about how to the heat map save in the software. Sorry, I don't understand the, the question. Um, I think she wants to uh, see the heat map and know how to export maybe to save it. Oh, okay. Oh, but well, that's a very good question. Okay, so we have, if you have the in the risk heat map report in this case, you can put it. A, you can compare the risk management in, in the of your company in the last month because that's again that's the risk management that you are moving the risks from re inherent to residual that you are putting controls that you are reevaluating uh, or reassessment uh, the risks and maybe you want a comparative map of to. To do that and this is a, a risk management that that audits want to know and you can you can create the report here okay what is the risk created in that period of time what is the risk level and you can download this in pdf png for your presentation on in excel for your tables or to create another reports but you can also if you Maybe you, you want to change this risk map. Maybe you want to customize, you want three, three for three or whatever. So we're going to deep into risk management, uh, the risk heat map customization. And maybe we're going, oh no, I, we don't want to work with five per five. We only want to work with four, four. So I want to put this in red. And this is the color that I want for my risk heat map and I, I don't want the name super this is going to be critical you always can customize your your heat your risk heat map uh, in this case in Peru. okay we have another question from Muti. I hope I pronounce well the name and um, he asked us about can you show uh, integration with chat chat gpt again of course of course so we're going to go into the rigs and when you go want to create the rigs from from scratch from zero you don't have any idea of the risks that you want to address so you can put the name of the risk and if you if you know it again but i with the chat gpt integration you're going to click on the suggest weeks and you need to choose the industry that you work with because the suggestion will take in account the risk management system that you're working with is not the same suggestion if you're doing in the operational risk management or anti-money laundering or uh, information security in this case we are in operational risk management so you choose the industry that you're working with uh, I don't know, construction. And then you choose the process. It can be marketing, commercial, customer service, financial, technology, accounting, logistic, production. We have this, all these, okay, maybe the logistics. And you click the suggest. They're going to uh, <laughs> read all the, 
open AI on the ChatGPT information and based on, again, the risk management system, the industry that you choose and the process that you choose, they will suggest. In this case, delay in the delivery of raw materials, failure in operational risk system resulting in downtime in production delays, inadequate communication between teams. And you just, if you click any of the suggestion, lag of coordination with the different contractors, then you're going to put the name in the in the in the in the rigs. And then of course you the the measure the, the chat GPT is only for the for the name or, or, or for or, for the, the yeah for the name of the risk. The the measure is going to be yours because this information is from the libraries of chat GPT. They are not reading anything from your company, but the measure of the risk it depends on your company. Only that. So yeah, the measure will be yours. And you want you have to, you want you you may choose is will be direct or by variables. Okay, we have a last question of this session. Albert asks us about what could be a positive a positive uh, impact how we can manage uh, this in the RIGS matrix. Could you give us a, an example, please? Sure. Uh, maybe, well, I, I think I, I, I gave the, the very wide approach of, the, of this example in my uh, early explanation. And for instance, in, in Colombia, uh, there, we are a software as a service company. So when we understand the context of my company and my industry and my country and the regulation of my company, there, there is a law that the software as a service company don't need to uh, uh, sell the uh, IVA of some so if we understand that regulation there is a risk so it's going to be a, a different a regulation for from taxes so we, we don't have to we don't have to charge the taxes for my for my clients so if if we don't have to tax uh, to charge the tax of, of my clients this is a positive risk because I'm going to receive more money or my clients will be able to pay a less price for my product. I don't know if you know what I mean or, or maybe a, a, an opportunity in the market. Or, okay, so this will be a, a free trade agreement between two countries. Maybe I'm in, in Mauritius, uh, and this will be a free trade agreement between Mauritius and Colombia. So if, if, if that, that's an opportunity, so maybe I can put it uh, as a, in my risk heat map, and I'm going to accept that because that will give me the opportunity to make better deals or to sell my services in Mauritius. But how we can do that, understanding the context, not only my company, but the regulatory or the economic changes around me or, and around my company. And this, it will be very useful if I have to, if I will be able to put that in the risk. And maybe this is going to be green and we're going to accept. So, that's a very good question because, for instance, if I want to, in this case, if I want, if, as you can see, the only information that I ask for for a risk is the name, the description, if I have the evidence, but we can also create another field to mark the treatment that I want to put in that risk. So that's another uh, very important feature that we have in Pirani. So we go into the settings of the software and in operational risk management, and we're going to create new fields for my company risk management. 
So for instance, in this case, let's go and see. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to create, oh no, in the rigs, I'm going to create another field that will going to be rigs treatment. And I'm going to put the single selection menu and I'm going to put avoidance. I'm going to put mitigation. As, as you can see, everyone, you don't you won't need a, a technology expert to do this. You will be able to put this in your risk management software very easily. I'm going to put that this will be required. And I'm going to publish. This is this will be a, a, a topic in for the next risk management school, but let's face it right now. <laughs> so we can go to the risk management and as you can see now in the software, we have the risk treatment and it's, and it's mandatory. And I'm going to put that I'm going to accept this risk. And I know, and then we can filter all the risks of my company. Okay, I have 100 risks, so I would only want to address the ones that I'm going to accept. Uh, or, or no, show me only the, the risks that I want to mitigate in order to create controls for that. So that's that will be a very good way to put it in the in the receipt map. And just in time, because now is in Colombia 11 that uh, we have one hour of the or risk management. So remember that the, the, in the next risk management school, we're going to talk about risk management strategies. We're going to talk about how we can create controls to mitigate those risks and to have the residual risks in order to talk about the risk management cycle, we're going to deep into the, the third phase of risk management strategies and control. So thank you very much. See you in two weeks. Thank you, Alejandro, for your valuable participation in this webinar. Finally, I would love to invite you to everyone to participate in a short survey that will appear when the meeting ends. <laughs> This will help us to continue improve our webinars. Thank you so much again and see you soon.